this is CJ Chivers for the New York Times. We went to the Kunar province in Afghanistan, which is in the east near the border with Pakistan, in order to get a glimpse of the state of the insurgency in the spring of 2009. Two well-known valleys in, in the Kunar province are areas that have seen some of the most intensive fighting in Afghanistan over the last several years. They're the Pesh Valley and the Korangol Valley. They're both quite small. The Korangol Valley is exceptionally small. The fight there takes place in a handful of villages, no more than several hundred houses, a string of farmers' fields and sort of a network of trails that connect them. The ultimate goal would be to get the Afghan villages to side with the government and to accept a place in the government and to allow government services and authority to come into these valleys. There have been places in Afghanistan where the Americans have made headway and the Korangal Valley is not one of them. It's very much a stalemate. You don't have a government here yet. What you have is a fight. On this patrol, 2nd Platoon Bravo Company heads to the nearby village of Laniol to meet with elders and gain traction in what they hope will become a counterinsurgency campaign there. After the bomb explodes, the Taliban begins an ambush with small arms fire and rocket-propelled grenades. The Americans take what cover they can. Five American soldiers had walked down the trail, and the insurgents detonated the bomb under the sixth man. By doing it this way, the American patrol is now divided. One man, Private First Class Richard DeWater, has been killed. The fourth man killed in the platoon in nine months here, and the sixteenth man killed in the battalion. Where is it coming from, though? The two lieutenants huddle where the river meets. They are exposed, but they have a good view. From here, they can try to coordinate the American actions in a way that will push the insurgents off and allow the trapped Americans to escape. Some more cover fire over. They're getting closer. They're getting more effective fire on 2-3 Bravo. They are? Yeah. One thing that's become self-evident over the last few years is that many of these units have become much more proficient at their tactics. Two six, you're going to do the drop in like 30 seconds. Let your boys know. They have a core of veteran soldiers, veteran NCOs, uh, and officers who have multiple tours in one war or the other, or both. And the units now are at the fundamental tactical level, much stronger, much more capable than they were several years ago. They have better equipment. The American officers and NCOs are making decisions very quickly and very decisively that can affect the flow of a battle. And if you're in their midst, you can see it happening around you with terrific speed. But there's no miscommunication. The other side suppressed. The soldiers can throw smoke grenades to obscure the withdrawal. They don't know at the moment whether this is the lull or the end of the fight. Maybe the Taliban is waiting for more. They're prepared to keep firing to cover the withdrawal of the men on the other side. The process of fighting for the valley against the Americans has hardened the insurgency. These are experienced fighters and while they have weaknesses, they're not particularly good shots, they're not particularly heavily equipped, they sometimes don't seem to have a great deal of ammunition. Um, while they have all of these weaknesses, they also have a variety of strengths. They know the local terrain better than the Americans ever will. They're fully acclimated. They know exactly where they can move without being seen by the Americans. The Insurgents also operate a network of spotters that look down from the ridges on the American position and they can see often uh, times when the patrols are coming or going. Both sides in tactical terms act clearly rationally. Once the firepower tilts to the American side, the Taliban begins to withdraw. Have the insurgents been injured or killed? 
or have they simply slipped away? The Americans don't know, as is often the case. With a larger force here and more fire bases up and down the valley, it might be possible to tilt the balance uh, in the Americans' favor. But at present, the soldiers here will tell you that they're at deadlock.